and roll over to the next slide, Todd. As as we're getting going through here, you don't get my lovely mug showing up on on the pictures here, but my role initially is just going to be to help welcome things in and to close us out when we get to the end. The the guys that'll be doing a lot of the the heavy lifting work are the other two gentlemen that we've got here. My, my role in the company is, as was mentioned, the kind of the director of our building solutions services team. So everybody that does work with design, engineering, construction, facilities management, you name it. I get to work with all those folks. I've been with Imagine It for about 25, almost 26 years now. And yeah, just my I want to make sure that everybody that's here has a chance to see what it is that we'll be doing or you can do in AutoCAD with some different workflows in Autodesk Construction Cloud, ACC, Autodesk Docs, whatever, whatever name you give it through that. So maybe turn it over for a minute. I'll throw it to Brian. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself a little more? Yeah, thank you, Joe. Brian Tuffin here. Thank you for having me today. Um, I've been with Imagine It for 20 years, so been around for some time, really working on Joe's team as a solutions consultant, now an engagement engineer, helping companies really better leverage the technology they have, transition to different technology, and developing a seamless workflow for them. As an engagement engineer, I get to do a lot of these presentations and uh, get to help you understand where technology can go. I look forward to this presentation today, really diving into the construction cloud and what we can do with the docs environment and an AutoCAD-based workflow. Uh, also brought Todd along here. Todd, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Thank you, Brian. Uh, as you mentioned, I'm Todd. Um, I have been with Imagine for about eight years. And before that, I was actually on a customer side of Imagine for probably another 10 years before that. So. I've known Brian and, and 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 Joe for a long time, and uh, I've worked in the industry for you know 25 years. Um, worked from, uh, I've just lived in the Autodesk AEC world for a long time. I've seen a lot of changes and 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 gained a lot of knowledge, and I hope to share that with you today. And I will turn this back over to Joe. Cool. So everybody can see here what our intent is for the the. The flow of the presentation today, uh, getting through largely just why do we want to consider ACC with AutoCAD and what are the possible ways that we can run with them together. But before we get into that, I just want to make sure, just take a very short bit of time here to ensure that everybody is here. Obviously, you know something about us. You got the invitation and you're attending, or later on you're you're watching, so you know imagine it exists. But I like to go through and just have a little bit of time to make sure there's a, a broader understanding of really what is it that we can do? How can we be of benefit to you? So Todd, if you roll onto the, the next slide, from an overall partnership standpoint, yeah, we do a lot with Autodesk. They're our largest partner that we have in our ecosystem. But as you're looking around the, the circle of, of partnerships that we do have, there's a lot more that we can do with or for you, depending on what you want to get into, whether it's uh, 3D laser scanning with Leica Geosystems or the training or consulting or other things around better leveraging what you've got going on with Bluebeam, visualization with Epic Games, whether it's Twin Motion or the full Unreal Engine. Uh, the list goes on and on. If we're talking about getting into uh, computational fluid dynamics in a big old 3D world. It, there's a lot that we can do, and we are more than just Autodesk. We are more than just Imagine It. We've got a, a sister company, Ascent, that creates curriculum. We've been doing a lot of work with them lately on getting uh, customer workflows documented into formal training manuals. So a lot of really nifty, cool things that are possible. I just want to make sure that everybody's aware that we can do some of these things. Now, when we talk about the team that's available to do that, on the next slide, we've got a map with all of the different locations of where we've got people, offices, you name it. I'm coming to you out of Denver, Colorado, so nice big dot there in Colorado. But whether it's through the US, Canada, um, all of our staff is located through US or, or Canada. And if we don't have somebody near you, they're not very far away. And when we're talking about it from a, a knowledge standpoint, 
if it's something that I can't help you with or Brian or Todd can't help you with, we, we know a person. We know a guy or a gal that does have that knowledge of what you want to be able to get into. So it's, it's a great bench that we've got working with you, for you, to help make things a little bit better. And when we're talking about that bench, on the next slide, whether we're on just a general building design industry or we're getting into manufacturing, uh, process plant work, you know, whether it's AutoCAD, Plant 3D, Revit, whatever, we've got people with direct experience and all sorts of different backgrounds. So maybe you're in the building and architecture world and you need to work with people that are in the construction side or you need to break into a little bit more of doing things in an energy and utilities world. We've got the, the chops to be able to help out with whatever might be on your mind, whether it's any of these industries, any of the, the software partnerships that we had a couple slides ago, wherever in the country or the globe you happen to be. So hopefully, hopefully that wasn't really anything new to you necessarily, but getting into a bit more of what is it possible? What can, how can I leverage Magin? What can they do for me beyond just helping me make sure I've got the right license count? So with that in mind, I'm going to step back for a little bit here and turn it back over to Todd and Brian to take us through what you're really here for is the, the different workflows we can go through. Guys? All right. Thank you, guys. Uh, um, so uh, let's have a little discussion about um, the Autodesk construction documents. Uh, before we get started, some of you may have different names for it. Some people uh, know it as BIM 360, some call it ACC, Autodesk Construction Cloud. It's gone through several name changes recently. Um, and so we're going to be discussing the Autodesk uh, Construction Cloud, but the docs portion of it for AutoCAD. Uh, during this presentation, what we're going to do is um, we're going to do a little back and forth between Brian and myself and try to demonstrate a workflow. Uh, so you can see how, how it might work between myself, Brian, and Joe, um, and how you can see leveraging the, the construction cloud and its inabilities. But before we get started into that, I, I, I need to take a few minutes and, and discuss, you know, what I've gone through in my career. You know, I've I've been working in AutoCAD for over 25 years. I'm I'm come from the days of digitizers and pen plotters, uh, and so um, I've really seen AutoCAD grow through quite a bit of growth and amazing changes. The the tool that used to use in the past and even today is so different, so much more efficient, so much more advancements, and it gives a great, um, a great uh, product, in, I guess, in the end, you know, and with, with a lot less effort. So, you know, through this time, we are creating these, these great drawings and creating the design that we want to create. We run into one of our first problems, and that is essentially communication. I have to share my files with people. I have to whether make PDFs out of them or share the files themselves. And I have to keep track of who's got the latest file. You know, did they get the latest file for me? Or I asked ask him which dates the file in, you know, that's kind of a, a difficult task, especially when you're working with people inside your office, people outside your office, and and uh, really becomes a, a difficulty to make sure and, and a risk and essentially that there might not be working with the most latest occurrence files. So I I decided to break a few PowerPoint rules here. Um, this one is the biggest one of all because, well, normally they tell you never to put this much data on a PowerPoint. But if you take a few minutes and look over the screen, you will probably recognize some of the things that you've probably experienced. Now, there are some areas, we're not gonna be able to cover all of the topics here. That ended up being like a three hour webinar. And, um, and so I would, I, we're going to do is we're going to kind of focus on some some ideas that I think were of importance to me. Um, when I talk about sharing a DWG file, how do I do it? Well, I can email it, I can drop it on an FTP site or Dropbox or OneDrive. There's all these different ways that I can share the file. The problem is there's not consistency. There's so many different ways we share our files with people. It really becomes a little bit dangerous, a little bit risky because again. Are you sharing the most current file? And uh, um, and then and then it comes time to looking over the drawings. And the other one I wanted to point out was markups. Are you marking up the most current 
drawing or are you, you know, are what, what method are you using to redline? Are you printing it out and getting out your nice red marker? Are you opening it up in Adobe and doing red lines or Bluebeam uh, to do your markups? We all have different ways we, and the problem is, is that even if we mark those up, where do they live? Are they sitting on a file server in the architect's office or maybe the engineer's office? Where do those files live to get marked up? Again, we're talking about communication. And then the, la the other one I wanted to point out um, is versioning. Um, well, in just one day, I may save my AutoCAD file five, six, seven times or more, and I'm the only one who sees those changes. And so um, it's about keeping track of every version, the entire iteration of a drawing's life cycle, from the moment you start drawing all the way to the very end. It's uh, so being able to know and track and have a bit of an audit history of what's happened with the project. Now, because of these issues you saw on the previous screen, you know, different uh, studies have been done. And they really identified that because of our lack of coordination, communication, and uh, centralization of files, that really has caused a lot of either financial or time uh, management issues when it comes to projects. Of course, time usually ends up costing money too. So it really just comes down to, uh, you know, there's a, there's a cost to inefficiency and could be from legal actions. It could be just rework or you know, miscommunications, things like that. So that's things that these studies looked at to understand exactly where the, uh, where the inefficiencies are happening. But that same list can be solved. Everything on that list has a solution to it, including the ones that I wanted to focus on. And those are the ones we're going to talk about today. Now, and of course, this particular slide and these, this whole slide will be available so that you guys can look over this list a little bit more length, a little more detail, and see if any of these issues are part of your you know, pains that you might have and what those solutions might be. So the, um, when you work with the Autodesk Construction Cloud, you essentially get, is what it says here, a single source of information. Being able to always have the most up-to-date current files for not just for yourself, but for your entire team, possibly for your outside consultants, your engineers, or for your architects. Being able to have the most uh, uh, same uh, set of files. Um, also being able to possibly redline. If you want to do all your redlining in Autodesk uh, Docs, you can do it there. And the the redlining will stay with that file forever. So if you have 25 versions of a file, you can go back to version 10 and look at those red lines. And that's really helpful. Um, and But there is a sense of, you know, uh, a permission or a security environment too. Uh, you will, Brian will demonstrate in a few minutes, the ability to see uh, a folder structure and being able to understand that you can control who has access to what folder. So if you wanna kind of control things, you can. And also mobile, that's really a big one. All the, all the files you put up there in cloud will not just be accessible to you, but they will also be accessible to those who have mobile devices. And so uh, later on, um, we're gonna see uh, how that plays out in an environment like ours. Um, now, I think one of the really important things that I find, and especially um, I'm, I'm a former bid manager and former CAD manager, when things go wrong, we need to find out why. And well, because we're using the cloud, because we have all the file history and who you know, who uploaded something, who downloaded something, who deleted something, who who you know who was the last person to modify the file, we have a bit of an audit history. So everything is traceable. We know what happened to a file. This will also help us eliminate you know disputes, uh, conflicts problems that people might have or disagreements because you'll have an audit trail knowing exactly how your product or your your design has evolved. Now that you have a healthy set of drawings, we're all communicating effectively, that will lead us down this path to be able to have a great design, which leads us into healthy planning of our projects, which then leads us into build and operation. 
And the more that we all communicate, the more we all share information, the better we will have a successful project. And Autodesk Docs will give us that opportunity to be able to share that information and make sure we're all on the same page. So connecting everyone, single source of information, and being able to track the, the workflow of a project is really where our goals are today. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna step out, I'm going to open this up to, um, to Brian. And Brian's gonna give us a little bit, of, uh, and again, we're gonna do a little bit of back and forth. And Brian's gonna start off with giving us a bit of a, an exposure to the Autodesk Docs environment. So Brian, I'm gonna go ahead and make you the presenter. And hey, thank uh, you, Doc. take it away. Excellent. So right now you should see me logged in to the Autodesk Construction Cloud, um, ACC login. Um, I'm right now an administrator on my hub. So I'm seeing a lot of projects and a lot of buttons here. The unique part about this is as a user, you're only gonna see the projects that you're a part of. And also to add to kind of the unique component of it, we're also able to see projects that were created in previous platforms. So this would be the old M360 projects. This would be the new project. One thing I like about it, very simple naming convention. I don't have to come up with a very custom unique number identification. I can just give it a name. Now we all run with project numbers. I understand that. So we do have project numbers we can assign to it and other metadata that we can start to capture about that project. I also like the fact that I can start to search. So I'm just gonna start searching workflow to find the existing project that Todd and I'll be working in throughout here. Once I go into that project, since I'm an admin of it, I'm gonna see who all is a member. Now, right now, the three of us are all a part of the same company, but I can also invite external people into this project and control what they can see. This would be the mechanism you would use to invite additional outside people or internal people into it. We also get to control what they're doing. Docs is a small portion of the construction cloud. We have a whole lot of additional modules that you can take it to a further level. But once again, we're just focusing on docs. So that's all we have turned on at this time. So let me jump into the docs environment. Really the docs environment becomes a viewer, a markup tool, a change informer of what's changed throughout here. And it's all revolving around something very familiar to everybody, a standard folder structure. So this folder structure can be created and developed by you. So you have a common look throughout project to project or server to project, something that's a consistency throughout. Now, all of these folders, we're gonna be focusing into the design drawing folders and the architecture side. I'm missing my civil and my MEP Todd here in a second is gonna show you how to add content, add information and put projects up here. But I can start to create a template out of this, not only of that folder structure, but I can also go into my, my permissionings and settings and capture who I want to see what inside of here. Another nice feature is, you know, in the architecture side, you're seeing DWGs, you're, um, DWFs, we got DWTs, things like that. We got some reference files, but we also have a wide list of additional file formats that we can have inside of here. Maybe all your Word documents, your PDFs, your photos. Maybe this becomes your entire project folder and everybody accesses what they need through this environment and controlling the permissions of who can see what inside of here. I'm gonna highlight one other thing. Todd already mentioned it, but notice a lot of these files have a lot of different versions. It tracks what's current and what's previous, and we can compare what's changed. I'll get to that here in a minute, but I think I'd like to start off with uh, switching over to Todd and let Todd go ahead and show us how we incorporate files into this environment. Todd, you should have control right. now. Thank you very much. Thanks, Todd. All right. So how did those files get up there in the begin with? Um, there's a couple different methods, but the primary method um, I'd like to discuss today is what you see on my screen. I've got two Windows Explorer screens. The one on the right is my directory to where my project is on my file server. 
I go to the S drive, projects, I have project X, and here's my directory of, of projects. Over here on the left, you'll see a, um, an icon here. It says Autodesk Docs. This is a separate install, but once it's installed, it basically gives you a direct access to the files that are up there in the cloud. Just like you know, we do things with, uh, with OneDrive or Dropbox or other types of programs to do similar, similar features. Uh, when I click on Autodesk Docs, you'll see it identifies this is the hub of my company. And so I'm going to go ahead and access my project through there by double clicking. Um, and once I do that, you'll see a list of projects that I've been working on. Um, and you can control exactly what shows up on this list. Um, if you're on a project, then it can show up. Um, well, the one we're going to work on today is the AutoCAD ACC workflow. So I'll open up that and project files and then i you see that same directory structure that that brian was showing you and they're basically right here so um i can i can always do things i can add uh new folders i can add new files you know directly from here but what i want to do here is i open up this folder and i notice that well i have my architectural folder already up there but i now want to include my civil and manufacturing drawings and to do that, it's as simple as drag and drop. And that's it. And you now, depending upon the size and the amount of files you're moving, you know, it, it processes pretty quickly. You know, that there's only, you know, a small handful of files. So it'll probably process here in the next minute. Um, obviously, bigger projects will take a little longer. But that's what I have to do to get the files essentially up there. And, and since the project's already set up, I mean, it took probably Brian no more than you know a couple minutes to actually set up the project in docs and once it's set up i just drag and drop and from that point forward i can actually um go to work and, and what i would do is i can start off here with autocad um i have autocad open here now if you're using when you're using 2024 and up in 2025 Typically, you're going to access the project using a little icon over here. It says Autodesk Projects, and you can see there's the hub. If you're using something older, uh, like 2023 or older, uh, you will use the your traditional open command, and you'll access those files the, uh, the same way through your... Let me get up here to my PC. Let me get it. To the right there is the Autodesk Docs uh, connector. So doesn't matter if you're using 2023 or older, if you're using, um, if you're using uh, newer versions. So with that, um, I can actually get cancel out of that and go to my project. And there's the project files. There's that project directory we just talked about. And go to design drawings. And look, the civil drawings are already up there. I'm going to go ahead and open up my architectural file here. And this is where I can begin working. Now, I think that... Before we get it, I do any real work here. I think that Brian wanted to make some uh, some adjustments to my drawings. I think he has some comments and things he'd like me to adjust in my drawing. So I'm going to turn it back over to Brian for a few minutes, and he's going to he's going to tell me what what's wrong with my drawing. So <laughs> if that's okay, let me go ahead and make you the presenter. Awesome, the yep. fun part. I need to I get to pick on Todd here a little bit and see what he's done. Um, so right now, uh, you should be seeing my screen. Um, you'll notice there's been a little bit of change that's happened here. This A01 DWG file, as soon as Todd opened it, it's telling me it's locked. I can find out when he opened it and who it's locked by. Also, I've got the DST file. He, he has a sheet set manager going, so that's why we're seeing that. But I still have the ability to come in and open that file and start to look at it. And, you know, I've made a few red marks here, but one thing I want to highlight here is notice how everything is muted in color. When I come in to do a markup, I want to add another markup here, and you know, I want to look at these windows also here. Right now, these muted red colors are notes to myself. I'm making comments to myself. Maybe I'd have to look at this area. Maybe I have to go deeper into it and get some, some support information about it, or I need to do a study of what's going on. As soon as I'm ready to make it available to everybody, I can come in and just very simply publish this information. So now anybody that has access to this file can open it, view it, and see the markups. 
well, that's great. But, you know, back in the day when I was hand drafting, oh gosh, it's scary that I did hand drafting. We used a colored system. Red was a markup. Green was a note to the person doing it. B was a no blue was a note to myself. I'm sure everybody had some sort of organization like that. But instead of using colors here per se, we can now start to generate issues inside of here. So I wanna generate an issue around the windows. This is gonna be a design issue here. And what I'm gonna do is place a call out right next to that and start to add a little bit more information about it. So you'll see on the right hand side, I have a window pop up and I can start to do a description inside of here. And you know, my description is, you know, I want to remove all the type of windows out of here. And you know, I know Todd is going to be working on it, but I can assign Todd to it, or I could assign a role or maybe even a company. Maybe it's a mechanical duct that needs to move and I don't know who it is. So I'm just gonna assign it to the role of mechanical contractor that's gonna go out and notify everybody on that team. But in this case, I'm gonna notify Todd about that. Now, Todd was automatically made a watcher. So he's gonna be notified anytime there's any change happening here. But you know, I'm just the person doing the markups. Yeah, I might be, you know, a kind of a coordinator here. So I want to be included on that. But ultimately, Joe's the boss. Joe's the project architect. He's the lead. He's in control of the whole thing. So I'm going to add him here and here also as an individual, just to be able to see that information. Now, I could easily add a location description so that when he gets an email, he sees exactly where it is. He understands you know, where I need to go to. But nowadays, that's not really needed because when he opens the issue, it will zoom him right into it. But what I do like to do is assign a due date. You know, I'll do a due date and a start date uh, probably today. That way I can track to see if I'm getting the response within the time that I need. And there's actually areas inside of here where I can set up rules to notify me when I'm getting close to a deadline, notify me when I'm exceeded a deadline. How many safety issues have I identified or code issues have I identified? So there's a lot of post analysis that can be done here. Now, just adjusting the type, removing the type F windows really does not answer all the information that's needed inside of here. So I can also add comments and submit comments to that uh, so that Todd has a little bit better idea of what's going on. You know, as I'm looking through here, I see ah, this area. What was I thinking here? Oh, you know what? I'm not happy with the design here. And, you know, I got framers on site that have started working and, you know, Really, I want to see if they've actually addressed that or started framing inside of here. So I'm going to take a look and jump in here. And I'm going to do a very simple description. Um, has this area been framed yet? I'm happy with that. I'm going to assign this to Joe. And I'm not going to give him a, a due date at this point because I know Joe's on site. I can always come back and you know, add more information or a deadline if I knew, need to. I just want to let him know that I'm looking at redesigning uh, that area. And I'm going to go ahead and submit that. So as soon as I generated these issues, the team members got an email notification. So I don't have to email them, call them, message them, send this file over to them. They're getting an automatic notification that you know, we've got problems in these areas. I'm not going to bother making fun of Todd here with an issue saying, hey, poor drafting habits of line work. But those are the types of things that we also redline. So what I'd like to do, turn it back over to Todd and let Todd uh, kind of walk through how he he deals with this. Todd, back to you. Thank you. All right. Let's go ahead and uh, get my screen shared out here. All right. So I got his email. Um, I've got the email from Brian. Uh, it's a design issue. Um, here's the comments he left me. And I can go through and read through, you know, he's got a due date of tomorrow. And there's a link to the drawing itself. That's great. So um, now what I'm going to do is I'm just go ahead and click on this link. And that's going to take me directly to the cloud and directly to where my issues are. And there it is. And you can see there's there's been past issues for other design issues. So it's keeping a history of all the issues that have gone on with the project. 
So uh, we're dealing with design issue 11 here. And see, there's my name, and there's that one that he created for Joe. Um, and I look through here, and I can read through his comments, and if there's any other additional information I need. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and jump on to the, the, the DWG itself. And when I click on that, I get the DWG. And there's all the red lines. As you mentioned, it's zoomed right to it. So that's really great. I can see all the all the redlining. I can even see Joe's, and so that's great. Um, and now I can see what I need to, what area I need to work on, what area I need to fix. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and jump back over to AutoCAD, and let's go ahead and make that correction. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to, um, let me make sure this is locked. All right, so I'm gonna open up my DWG here. Come on, open. And I'm going to go ahead and make that change. So I'm going to be quite uh, simple about it here. I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of my my F windows and I'll delete that. Get rid of these. Delete that. And now I'm going to go ahead and move my windows over here. I'm going to go ahead and move them down. I'm just going to eyeball it for now. I'll be a little more accurate later on. All right, delete that. I'll leave it there for now. And uh, I'll go ahead and move this one. And we'll go ahead and move it. All right. And whoop. Okay. All right. So I've made my changes. I'm going to go ahead and close this file. I'll go ahead and save it. And what's nice about it, the moment I save it, it's going to start uh, setting uh, updates to. Uh, to the cloud. And I now I'm on my main file by A01, I'm going ahead and reload that link. And you'll see that it's now updated. So I got just my E my E windows, my F windows are gone. So also I noticed he was complaining about my drafting here, these uh titles that are sitting on top of the on top of the line work. So I better move those. Let's let's make them happy. I'll come over and put these down here. Move these down here. All right, all right. So now that I've got that done. Uh, I think I've done everything that I'm responsible for doing. So what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and save this work. I'll leave it open for now. But I am going to go back to the cloud, and I'm going to go back to that issue, and I'll go ahead and set that to pending. I'll go ahead and leave that as pending, and then I will leave a comment down here for Brian here. Um, I have moved the windows and removed uh, F windows. All right, all right. so I've, I've, I've left my comment. So he is also gonna get an email now, uh, letting him know I've done that changes. So now I'm done. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and um, uh, send it. What well, you know? What? I forgot one last thing. I want to. You know, I come from the days where, you know, uh, whenever I finish uh, a red line, I'd like to let them know that I've I've not missed it. So sometimes I come over here with my highlighter, and I'll set my highlighter. I'll leave it as green here. I'll go ahead and just kind of be not very clean. I just just letting know. This is what I used to do with the paper. I just come over here with my my marker and just let them know that I I fixed it. Whoop. And let me go ahead and fix. All right, do that to me. Right, let's go ahead and fix this one here. Let me go back to this real quick. Ah, I want to. Sorry, using the wrong wrong tool for a second here. I was trying to pan, but it kept zooming. Let me, and I'll go ahead and mark these two real quick. All right. So just so notice when he comes in now. Now keep in mind, just because I marked these up doesn't mean he could see them yet. Because remember, anytime you do a markup, um, they're yours. They're your private markups until you are ready to share. In fact, if I come over here to the side, I can look at all the markups of it from everyone. And I can see the ones. Now, if they were, I can only see the ones that are public. Like if Brian had, had marked something and kept it private, I would not see it in this list. So I'm only seeing the ones that have been published. And here's the ones that are private. These are mine. So I'm just going to hold my shift key down, grab them all, 
and publish them all simultaneously. All right, so that's it. I think I'm ready for uh, for to send it back to Brian for him to look over my work. And let's go ahead and give him make him presenter. Excellent, thank you, Todd. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. Let's verify. Everybody should, buddy should be seeing the web here now. And right off the bat, what I want to kind of highlight is notice I've got a different version here. We were on version 12, now we're on version 13. It's still locked because Todd still has that CAD file open. And I'm going to see if you remember to save. So I want to go back to version 12, kind of take a look at what happened inside of here. You know, in version 12, yes, I had the comments. Version 12 is when Todd made uh, some markups and changes inside of it. So I'm going to jump over to 13 here. Easily able to switch back and forth between version to version, uh, making changes, manipulating things, so on and so forth. Um, with these changes being taken into place, I'll I'll fix it in, in th uh, version 12 here in a minute. But I noticed that he updated one of his issues. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. Um, I only have one thing here that I wanted him to change, so it's not e not too hard to tell. Yes, it's been changed, but I do have the ability to come in and do a compare. So I can compare what's changed from 12. I can select my view, select my view, and do a, a on top overlay comparison here. And you'll notice we're seeing very quickly here that yes, the title's moved. Yes, the windows got deleted, got moved. I can do a on top or I can do a overlay with a slider if I want to inside of here. But ultimately, you know what? I'm very happy with what's happened here. I'm okay with it. I'm gonna close out of it and I'm gonna jump right back into it here. So jumping back in graphically, I like to make a few changes. Personally, I like to come in and make those green so that I know, yes, they were addressed at that point in time. I could have used control and selected multiple here, but I'm just gonna select them. That way, when we create our version 13, I can go ahead and delete them, knowing that's been taken care of. It's addressed. Now the issue itself, yeah, he made a few comments back. I can see a comment history here. I have an active log associated with it. I'm okay with closing this project out. So instead of pending here, I'm gonna go ahead and add that, edit it and close it out so that we're all done and you'll notice that it turns into a gray issue for it. But you know, I've got this one red issue and it's getting close to a critical deadline here. You know, I need I, I, I need to get with Joe. I know Joe's out on the field. Um, he doesn't have his computer, so I hope he has a cell phone or his iPad or something going on. So I'm gonna see if he can take a look at it and see what's happening and give me a little bit of feedback with that. So with that, I'm gonna change control over to Joe and Joe's going to uh, close this out for us. Joe? You should be a presenter now. Great. So when we're looking at things, uh, I'll go ahead and share my screen here. It's, you know, I've been away from software for long enough that I'm kind of becoming that pointy haired manager type guy. So hopefully everybody is seeing my screen. And this is a reflection, just broadcast of what I've got on my iPad. Cause I don't know that whole CAD stuff anymore and getting onto the web. I just, whether in this case it's an iPad, but it could have just easily been uh, a phone, doesn't matter. If I've got an active internet connection, then I just go and start using things, it's all good. If I know I'm going to a place where I will not have any sort of an internet connection, uh, as you can see through here, just last sync five minutes ago down on this corner, I've, I've been, uh, I hit sync before I, I lost my internet connection. I could go mark things up, do whatever I need to without an internet, come back and then synchronize again when I'm done. As it is, I'll go ahead and head into that project. And as I'm looking at things, similar to what Brian was going through, I'll go ahead and tap to go to issues at the bottom. And I've got my design issue sitting up here at the top. So it is open. Uh, has this area been framed yet? It's assigned to me. I can scan through and see what's there. No other attached documents or anything else coming through here. But I do want to say, well, which area has been scanned or, or what? You know, I, I want as I'm looking her up and down, it's like, well, where where is the file? Where is the due date? Where where's the things that I want to be able to work through? Are there you know, pictures that people are looking at or or whatever? So if I've got a, a a direct link to that, I'll have those 
set for you know work location of where is that that file at but as it is you know I don't, I don't have a specific sheet that this was attached to because of how some of the things have gone through so i'll just turn around and say let me look at the files so i'll go back to design drawings architectural a01 looks like actually it's grayed out i need to get that updated because there's a past version or a, an un up to date version that I've got going for that particular file. So grab that and it does tell me because, you know, whatever reasons are out there, I don't have access to that specific thing right at this minute for whatever reason. Uh, Autodesk servers processing things, my internet at the moment, whatever. If I go back to any of the other types of issues that we've got through here, I'll be able to see everything that I've been assigned to over time and I've got I've got it all. So maybe going back to files again for a moment, I'll go take a look at A02 and in my case here, I wanna be able to understand what's happening for the different files. I'm in what's currently the beta viewer for this one. It's pretty slick, it's quick, it gives me all sorts of extra markup tools that you'll see here on the right hand side. But if I'm looking at some different items and I wanna be able to understand you know, what's happening with certain areas of these models, let's say the, the windows that were out here. I've got the same thing where I can go ahead and you know, cloud out uh, a markup that I wanna be able to go through and, and reference it in some place, go ahead and publish that out and be able to say this needs some, some work. If I need to through here, I can go ahead and set a scale and start doing measuring of whatever I need to. Uh, from a, a pen standpoint, if I'm marking things up, I can either fat finger it or if I've got a uh, Apple Pencil on an iPad, I've got some things that I can go ahead and sketch through. But I've got access to the entire drawing to do whatever it is that I need to. If I want to get a, a leader with some things going on, I could go ahead and track this out and the text is going to be um, just what? Keep it nice and simple. Go ahead and finish that out and then say that I need that to be, you know, some sort of a piece of text and coloring going right over, we can see there. And then when I need to go ahead and publish that out so we can see what's happening. All of these things are happening as, as I'm running through and running it on my, my iPad. Now, I've got a, a reflector running here to be able to share what's happening on my screen. I just got it installed just a moment ago. And I want to save these back out and, and maybe assign things or track those issues. So let me go back and see if this issue has been updated yet. Uh, let me go back to my projects, hit my sync button, let everything come on down. And there's that unregistered item because I installed it today and just need to get my, my reflector app updated. And we can see where we've got things actively coming through. So up here on the top, we can see I've got five files that are remaining to be downloaded. Clicking in downloads to be able to see that those are the civil ones that are downloading right now. If I go back to architecture, here's my A01. There's my uh, issue that I'm working through, all the details on it. I can go ahead and click a tab up here to edit my notes. Add a redesign here, I'll say uh, at, Brian, um, all good, not framed yet. So just a mobile app. I don't have to know anything about anything. I'm not gonna be making any changes. I placed in that comment, this is an issue, so I can say instead of its status being open, I'll go ahead and put it into an in review status and if need be, if I've got the right permissions, I can check and verify who's assigned to this or who is the person that it's assigned to. So I can shift it off and go back to Brian. If I need to, I can say, you know what, I'm, uh, I've got a little bit of an issue here of, uh, I need to take a picture of verifying what's happening, but right now it just so happens that I am uh, dog sitting. So there's the reason why nothing's been done yet, but we're working on it. We're making things happen and Life is good, and I forgot to hit the snap picture button so it's not showing up there, that's on me. I'm, I've got everything, I'm done here. I'm gonna go ahead and close out. I've, I've got my, my work for the day done. We're gonna go back out and make things happen.
So with that, I'm going to go ahead and set the presenter back to Todd to take us through just the last little bit of what we have from a presentation and get ourselves into the, the Q&A portion of our session here. So as we're thinking about things, we, we walked through a bunch of different workflows. We saw from my side how we could do things on mobile. You saw from Brian and Todd how we can do things desktop, in-app, in, in AutoCAD itself, whatever flavor of AutoCAD you're talking about. It doesn't matter. Uh, web browser, whatever web browser you're on, it's all there. If you've got the AEC collection, you've got your seat of AutoCAD from the AEC collection, you already have access to everything we were doing here. All of those tools are at your fingertips. Let's just take it and run. Now, beyond that though, what if you wanted to go a little bit further? Well, there, we didn't touch everything, so reach out to us. Let's have a deeper conversation about that. Maybe there's some more in-depth training that we can and should do for you and your team around everything that can be done in Docs. How do we set up the proper permissions so that people only get access to the things that you want them to have access to? How do we really make this work the proper way with sheet sets? Well, hey, I use Plant 3D. How does that work with a Plant 3D version instead of just a plain AutoCAD or Civil 3D or you name it? Let's take those steps and go to that next level. And, and what if it's you want to do something a little bit more? We saw issues there, but with all this stuff, what if I wanted to track meeting notes? What if I wanted to start getting into managing the cost and financials of a project? We can extend further. It gets to things that are beyond docs. It gets to other aspects of the Autodesk construction cloud. But the possibilities, you know, I don't know, it's not limitless, but there's a lot that we can do. The stuff that we're looking at here are just some of the different types of features of where you might choose to grow your use of the construction cloud if it makes sense. If just docs is fine, great, let's sit it. Let's sit where we are and, and enjoy that part. But if we need to go a little bit deeper, we've got those, those possibilities, those capabilities. If you roll over to the next slide, it really just comes down to, I've said it before, I've said it again, it's what I tend to harp on, is how can imagine it be a tool for you how can you leverage us to make your life a little bit better is it workflow analysis to make sure do we have the right workflow processes to go into that docs docs environment is it something where this is great i've got docs but i need to go through and get a little bit deeper into uh, synchronizing files to other places because i've got some people that i work with that I collaborate with that cannot, will not, whatever, send files to Autodesk Docs? Is, is there an integration that we need to work through? What levels of data management do we need to talk about to make sure it's running efficiently? Or is it just some basic training, you know, talent development within your team? There's a lot of places that we can be that, that tool in your belt for us, for, for you. Where can we do that? Where can we be of benefit? So with that, I'd like to open us up into our Q&A session, but before I do that, just any final comments, Brian or, or Todd? No, I'm no, ready I'm, for the I'm Q&A, good. looking forward to it. Ditto. Thanks everybody. All right, a um, couple questions did roll in during the presentation. The first one I can answer, um, will we receive a recording of this webinar? Yes, you will um, look for that in your inbox uh, sometime next week. And then um, the second question, we use Blue Celio Meridian to store our drawings. Will this still work with Construction Cloud to identify when someone is working on the file and it is locked? I would say that we should probably get into a deeper conversation of that one. I, don't, I think these blue yellow, maybe? I, I don't remember the exact uh, pronunciation of that title either, but as a, as a separate document management system, what we're likely wanting to do if you're looking at using docs as an active thing is maybe more of an integration between the two of how do we want to send files between your maybe what you've got in blue yellow for a system of record whereas docs would be your active design environment so how do we want to connect the two so that we're sending files back to your system of record when it needs to be but leaving them in docs when they need to be there 
uh, there's some assumptions I've got through there. I would say let's reach out to your Imagine It account rep and let's set up that conversation. Yeah, and I would extend that to anybody that has any questions or wants to to see this kind of tailored to your environment. Please reach out to your account rep and uh, we'll gladly jump on a call with you to explore that. Okay, um, a couple other questions just came in too. Um, how does Docs differentiate between work in progress versus a new version? So it's a little bit different with the work in process versus new version. Um, in an AutoCAD environment, anytime you save the file, the file's being updated for it. So what a lot of companies will do is archive off a copy of a version of it for record sets. 